Keeping time, can one of Japan's oldest watchmakers stay ahead in the digital age? Can its leader reposition the company? And provide a timeless appeal in the world's luxury market? Our subject in this program is the president of the company that designed the world's first quartz wristwatch. Shinji Hattori is also the great-grandson of the company's founder, Seiko, one of the few businesses anywhere to have a line of succession lasting more than a century. And he's now taking the watchmaker upmarket with a design that has taken 28 years to develop. Seiko means precision. Shinji Hattori, the president and CEO of Seiko Watch Corporation. A long tradition. He's the great-grandson of Seiko's founder. 120 years ago, almost 110 or 20 years ago. Some brands sell very expensive watches with a lot of diamonds and jewels and so forth, and they have the brand power to sell these very expensive pieces. We appeal to the world with unique technologies. Everything unique sells in today's world. That is what we've learned. When we introduce something technologically unique, we are confident our brand can appeal to the consumers, not with diamonds and jewels, but with the unique inner workings of the watch. Basically what they're saying is that your watch is not accurate enough. We're going to give you atomic style time, so you lose one second per month. To reposition themselves in upmarket uh, uh, positioning, that's not enough. And if they really want to enter a higher segment, they would have to also come with a different marketing strategy. They would probably have to introduce a completely new brand name and uh, separate it in terms of its identity completely from the company. Very much the way, I guess, Toyota did with Lexus years ago. The grand Seiko idea, I'm not sure that would sell very well overseas. With stiff competition, Seiko will have its work cut out to establish an image as a luxury brand. However, the creation and release of the spring drive and its vision of innovation and refinement will at least provoke a careful appraisal by both consumers and competitors. And that's all from this edition of Focus Asia, the business leaders. Thanks for watching. I'm Karen Koh. Goodbye.